Hey there everybody, Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter from CarterMatt.com. This video is our discussion on This Is Us Season 4, Episode 12. This is Part 2 of their Hell of a Week saga that they have been putting out. Part 1 was about Randall and went through that on the channel already. Part 2 is the story of Kevin Pearson and what happens with him, with mm -hmm. Sophie, with kind of his past intersecting with his present and I really really love this episode and I I feel like I could say that with like 85% of all this is us episodes but it doesn't make it any less true yeah it's true it was a really good episode and I know how much you love Justin and he's he was really good in this episode Justin is sort of like the unsung hero of This Is Us. Like, everybody else gets to go to the award shows with a lot of the nominations, and Justin's always kind of, like, in the back with his hand in the air and just being like, what about me? What? Well, come on, guys. Well, and it's kind of like Kevin. Yeah, it's just it's an interesting sort of uh, dynamic there. Maybe it's art imitating life. But, you know, Kevin is this character who he's got, I think, what so many people in the world wish they had, which is unparalleled success yep kevin probably never has to actually work a day again in his life with all those residuals from the manny that he's gonna be yeah, getting no kidding and yet here he is like still unhappy and still seeking something and i think it's that something that someone like randall has already figured out and that is love that is you know companionship something that he can come home to well and it's also interesting just for kevin in general because even though he did have a very loving family. It's almost like he just didn't feel like there was enough love to go around for him, that he was always kind of forgotten a little bit. Yeah. Which and, we saw a little bit more in this episode where he was connecting a lot more to Sophie's mom. Yeah, and we'll, we'll dive into that even more as we continue. Before we do, though, if you like this discussion, give us a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other updates that we've got coming your way. I, that idea, the going somewhere else to find what you're looking for, that I think does really epitomize Kevin back when you see him in these sort of flashbacks where he's seeking out something from Sophie's mom. And I think he's also at the same, same time sort of seeking out something from Sophie. He marries her at such a young age and yeah. maybe, you know, I don't know if, I've ever talked about this, but maybe on some level it is kind of a, I don't feel like I have that same bond with certain people in my own family, so maybe I need to go and create something extra, create this other so that I can feel what somebody like Randall maybe feels already. Yeah, and I think that there are a lot of people that can relate to something like that, that maybe didn't have the most perfect family life or didn't have really any family life that then they want to go and make their own family sort of thing. And that would explain why he married Sophie so young. He was really connected to Sophie's mom. We saw that with his small part on Days of Our Lives where his own mom didn't watch, but Sophie's mom was celebrating him and lifting him up in a way that he felt that he wasn't getting at home. And it's interesting watching this show back over the years here where you get to really see where Kevin's coming from, that he feels that he wasn't getting what he wanted from his family in his mind and what he was actually getting from his family. And it was it's interesting that even even though he was getting a lot from his family, he just didn't feel it. And I think that probably comes from some level from him wanting to sort of be this hero in his mind in a lot of ways. I mean, you think about Kevin's pursuit, so many of them are attention-seeking in their yeah. own way. And I'm not saying that Kevin is like this just obviously overly selfish person, but he was a football star. He was, you know, getting in the limelight there. He yeah, was... he is missing that attention. And he felt that he was missing it growing up in his, in his childhood. He seemed to be you know, missing it later on. So it's not surprising that he went into a profession like acting where there is a lot of attention on you and it still isn't fulfilling the thing that he's missing, which is that attention from family. And that sort of brings us to the start of this episode where you see Kevin on set. By the way, you know, thumbs up to M. Night Shyamalan being an actor on This Is Us this season. 
he appears in a lot of his movies, but it often does still strike. like, oh, that's actually M. Night Shyamalan on This Is Us. Yeah, no, it's cool. This show can bring in some pretty big guest stars. Yeah, and so he's on the set with this movie. He gets word that Sophie has been contacting him relentlessly. Yep. And, you know, Kevin's decision to actually go across the country to be there for... Her mother's funeral, there, there's a lot going on here because I think he does, I think he wants to be there for Sophie because, you know, he does love Sophie and he cares about Sophie. But I think on some other level, Kevin in this episode, I think he's really pursuing this idea that he can chase down what was and turn it into what is. He's not so much living in the past as though he's trying to recreate the past and I think he kind of forgets along the way that, okay, not every variable is going to be as it once was, no matter how hard you try. Yeah, and I think that's the the problem with nostalgia in general. And we've all been there yeah. where we think about something from the past, and we're like, oh man, that was really great. And we have a little bit of that revisionist history in our yeah. minds where you want to recapture that moment. And the nostalgia, you always kind of forget kind of some of the bad parts of it like uh kate in the sequin fight yeah. so she remembers that it was like the best day of her life that they had the sequin fight with jack and with randall and the the pearson pizza and all yeah. these wonderful moments and has completely discarded the fact that her dad got really upset in the kitchen, threw this play at the wall, and that there was all these other things that did and were going on in that that memory that yeah. she has. So revisiting nostalgia is very difficult because it never is exactly the way that you think it is. And sometimes you try to get back into those moments and you just can't. It's it's a congruence in a lot of ways where it's sort of like, okay, it's that's a really good example. And it's sort of like, all right, so if you're going to try to recapture the magic of this memory that Kate has, you need this variable and this variable and this variable. And for Kevin, it's sort of like, okay, you need Kevin to be in this space. And then you also need Sophie to be in this space. And then you need these other extracurricular variables to all kind of line up as well. And I think you see in this episode, once... Kevin and Sophie are together, you know, Sophie has these moments where maybe she's pulling a little bit towards Kevin because this idea, I think, is appealing to her on some level. But then she sort of retreats from it because she's just thinking, oh, I am engaged to this person who I love. I have a different life now. I have also been divorced from Kevin. I have also had a breakup with Kevin that was really, really not good. Yeah, she's been down this road with Kevin so many times yeah. and it's it's difficult also for her to even just kind of see where he is now. Like, it was nice to see them kind of go down memory lane a little bit and share this this thing with Goodwill Hunting, which I'll share a little yeah. thing that I have about Goodwill Hunting. I was actually an extra on that set way back in the day when I was in high school. I was just trying to get extra money doing extra work so I was on Goodwill Hunting and it was shot in Toronto, it was shot yeah. at U of T, it was shot at my old high school so anyways there's that but that moment and and seeing them finish the movie together was really powerful because it's something almost like just closing that chapter of that book yeah. in a way that it needed to be closed because a lot of this they have been trying to recapture what they had and bring back what they had instead yeah. of the idea of if they were ever going to get together in the future building something new and not based on what they had but on what they have and I think Kevin has so many like what they had recreations in this episode because I think he is he is trying to relive that and I think that's all he has in his mind right now because I don't think he has like any sort of present just anything he can manifest from the present because there is no present for the two of them right now and you know I he has the moment where he shows up outside with the uh, the magic pink donut box which pink donut box is getting a ton of airtime on television yeah, this season but uh, no he uh you know, he remembers this. It's very sweet in its own way. But also, you know, there is this kind of romantic imagery to it of here is this, you know, good-looking guy 
in a suit. I mean, it is a funeral. It is a very sad occasion, but he has traveled across the country for someone. To bring her something that's a comfort. Yeah. And to even have that moment that was so beautifully shot of the reflection in the window of her and him yeah. and him calling outside. To have that, he knows that he has messed up so much with this relationship. For him to have that respect to be outside, to be like, oh, I have this sort of grand gesture of what I want, yeah. but you know, if I go in there, am I really giving Sophie what she wants and taking that moment to be like, you know what? I'm gonna make that call and make sure that it is what she wants because this is about her. Yeah, and I think that is one of the times where Kevin is more selfless in this episode as opposed to selfish because, I mean, he does do selfish things. We all do selfish yep. things in life. And, you know, Sophie's decision to go out there and not have Kevin enter that, it's sort of like she is separating her past from her present and she doesn't want these two things to really collide. Yeah, and when it comes to something like a funeral and the death of her mother, I think it was also really powerful her realizing and understanding that her own fiance didn't really know her mom and this is the one person that knew her mom so well yeah. and had a really good relationship with her that was genuine. It wasn't fake in any kind of way. So I think this is exactly what Sophie needed. Everybody deals with death in different ways. So it was interesting to see that, that that's the way that she ended up dealing with it. That separating herself and Kevin with somebody who really gets it. And really, you know, we have all this stuff in the past that I think is really, really well done and frames the present really well. And now, though, we also have what I think is kind of a complicated future. There are these moments, I think, between Kevin and Sophie where, I mean, you see the obvious chemistry that's there. You, you yeah. see that there are feelings that are there. And I think yeah. there is hesitation on the part of Sophie. I think the question now becomes, though, after going through all this, what are the lingering effects of it? Does this cause Sophie to change anything? Because we know Kevin has a fiancé in the not-too-distant future, yep. and they are expecting a baby. How much should we still consider Sophie? I've had her at number one on my list of most likely contenders for weeks. Is she still there now? I think she's actually more there now, even with the big reveal with Madison. Yeah. I just feel that... Her going back and looking at her grandmother's ring and she, th them watching the end of that movie and closing that part of their life and also her making that realization that her own fiancé is missing some things that, you know, are out of his control. I mean, he came in when he came into her life. But that feels like something that at that moment she really wants. And death can really open up your mind to a lot of different things of what you want, what you don't want, mm -hmm. possible mistakes you're making, stuff like that. It makes you think. I think Sophie is gonna be doing a lot of thinking. I don't know if we'll be revisiting her a lot during this thinking, but I think she is going to probably contemplate a lot of this and my understanding is we're going to have an answer on all this before the end of the season. So you're not going to have to wait too long, but let's get to the Madison of it all. <laughs> I There are there are people, I, this is us fans, legitimately upset about this because I believe Dan Fogelman, creator, at some point said that this was never going to happen. And now, lo and behold, here we are. And I know for everyone out there who's been predicting this, the Madison-Kevin thing... Maybe you get maybe you're onto something here. I mean, we have to at least kind of take it more seriously now. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen in the past where Kevin when he first kind of ran into her and you know, was like, "Please make sure that I don't sleep with her. She's too crazy." Yeah. We've seen them throughout, you know, throughout the history now that they're not really a thing and they weren't real. There's not a lot of there's not a lot a lot of chemistry there for me. The fact that they ended up in bed together, though, doesn't surprise me. I'm a um, licensed funeral director in my past life, so I've seen a lot when it comes to people having this kind of connection when people die. 
and people hooking up with people, people just looking for that comfort or that connection with another living human being. So it's not shocking in the least that he would end up in bed with Madison. It's it's almost twofold because I, there's that part of it, which I think is very much true. And then you're also adding to this, he was with Sophie, this person who was probably his one true love, or at least yep. one of them so far. And he recognizes that through everything that they went through, he's still not with her. So I think he's probably also like balancing this compulsion that he needs to try to move forward. And then also this feeling of loss, they come together. We don't really know everything that's going on with Madison beyond just like the little bit that she talked about. Yeah, and I want to touch on that too, because I've seen a lot of people debating this online. Um, Kevin says that he's never been broken up with before. And I've seen people saying that that's, that's not true because Zoe broke up with him. And then other people arguing that Zoe, I guess, never really broke up with him. I land on the side. I've I've now gone back and watched that scene like an unhealthy amount yeah. of times now to really feel that out. And to me, after watching this scene so many times now, it feels like he was broken up with by Zoe. She started that conversation to be like, listen, we need to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. And she was leading him down the, we can't be together because you want to have kids. I don't want to have kids. And she started that breakup conversation and he was trying to talk her out of it to be like, listen, we already had this talk. I want to be with you. I choose you. And she continued down the, we're breaking up conversation. Yes, he accepted it at the end, but she still was the person that was breaking up with him. That's my take on it. I think that, again, that idea of like Kate and the sequin fight, of how that was the best day of her life, we all kind of have a bit of that revisionist history in our minds that Kevin may be like, yeah, you know, looking back on it, Zoe was right. You know, I do want to have kids and whatever, whatever. So she didn't really break up with me. It was mutual. And it ended being mutual, but it started as a breakup. That's how I see it. Yeah, I think it really... And that's why I get why everybody's kind of divided on it. Because it kind of is both. Well, it kind of is both. But I, I think to me, you know, what what really matters the most through all of this is, you know, how Kevin sees himself. And I think how Kevin sees himself is someone who always flees from situations. Mm -hmm. And I think probably even more so than who is responsible for initiating the breakup. It probably is Zoe. But... I think he probably feels like on some level, you know, maybe he could have done something more. Or even if he doesn't feel that way, I think probably this mass of other relationships that he's been in have been to such degree that it sort of just masks everything that he went through with Zoe. Or yeah. he goes back to some of his other mistakes that he made in his relationship with Zoe and yeah. tries to go back and say, okay, this is why things started to go south. But regardless, I think it's ultimately just kind of about where he is with Madison in this moment. I don't, for right now, I don't believe anything more is going to come of this unless we want to say that this is when Kevin's baby is conceived and Madison becomes pregnant on the other side of this. I, I, I can't figure out and fathom the exact timeline because we don't know how many months along his fiance is later on in the flash forward. Yeah, we don't know. And it it is possible. I mean, we do know that it's not that long after that he's... And, and it's also something that Kevin has done in the past. He has rushed into marriage before and he has rushed yeah. forward and stuff. So if the big reveal turns out that it's Madison and he's rushed forward into getting engaged, it's not going to be shocking. I think for me, just with Kevin at this point in his life and everything that he has gone through and a lot of the growth that he's had, it would be a bit disappointing to see kind of him handle it that way. Because I think he can still, if it turned out to be Madison, he can still have a good family and a life with her without rushing into something as fast as that. I don't think it's Madison. I don't gonna, think it is yeah, either. I'm just going to throw that out there. I feel like this is a red herring designed to... 
I mean, maybe appeal to all of the Kevin Madison, the Kedison, I don't know what the ship name is, but like all the fans that are out there on this and try to deflect from what is the most obvious conclusion, which is Kevin and Sophie. That's yeah. still where I'm landing coming out of all this. But soon we will be back to discuss episode 13, which is going to be based on Kate. And there's a lot to unpack there. This is going to probably be not the easiest episode in the world. Nope. But I guess we're finally going to learn more about what's going on with Mark. I wish we... I, I wish we... Can we just say that Mark is a jerk and then just move on from Mark? I, this is not going to be fun to deal with Mark, but, you know, we, we get another reason, I guess, to hate Mark. So there's that. But yeah. anyway, let us know in the comments what you thought about this as a Season 4, Episode 12. And if you do like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and you can support us further by checking the link in the description to the Carter Matt store. And we'll see you here next time.